Hello, my name is Maria Galante, and I'm really happy to be here at Type Weekend talking about type. Um, a big thank you to Type Weekend. Um, in addition to being a freelance graphic designer, I also teach. So as I was preparing for this talk, I asked my students what they thought was important for me to include in this presentation. This is the, one of the things I thought was important, and here's the other. Big thank you to my students. I am an adjunct for three universities by night, and I teach 11th and 12th grade during the day. Um, it's a vocational technical high school, and anyone not familiar with that model, it means that students have a chance to pick a technical program or a trade as a freshman, and then they're there until they graduate. My students are in my classroom all day, every day, for one entire week, every other week. Students follow one week learning in DVC, and then the next week they're in their academics all week. In addition to my classroom, we also have a separate space for photo studio, video studio, uh, critique and client room, meeting room. Um, and through lectures and demonstrations and hands-on projects, students acquire the skills and knowledge to use the computer as a design tool. Students complete a variety of projects uh, that incorporate many things um, and they are guided by this booklet, which is the frameworks or strands um, provided by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Strand two is specific for DVC, and it outlines um, competencies uh, that are matched with performance examples as an assessment tool. I know it looks awful, but it's really not that bad. The typographic competencies in strand two are pretty specific uh, in terms of anatomy, history, measurements, uh, manipulation, but it's also very broad when it comes to uh, style and relationship when used in a design project. I've found the performance examples to be helpful, um, but I've used specific client projects, my own creations, and some from design books. Every DVC teacher can create any type of project that meets the competency, so it's up to the individual teacher um, to decide what to do. Uh, for this presentation, I'm going to show you examples of my student work, which will identify what I teach about typography in my classroom. So I'm going to actually end my show and stop me from appearing on the screen so that you can totally enjoy uh, the student work. So here's a project. Um, in this example, uh, students are learning about typographic hierarchy. They're assigned a social problem to research along with companies that are taking action. In this example, the student researched Amnesty International, then used the required hierarchy principles of type. Once students have researched companies, then they are required to create a companion piece for a social problem that they're interested in. Again, the requirement was to use typographic hierarchy and identify in writing uh, how and where it was used. Students are introduced to the history of design by practicing the Swiss style or the international typographic style when they create posters for a musical event. Students take album covers and redesign them using only the Swiss style. They are also introduced to Mike Joyce, who is the originator of this concept. All students participate in a critique where everyone has a chance to present and receive feedback, and students learn how to present their work and not have it right next to each other's for better presentation. After students learn the elements and principles of design, they study the history of deconstruction. It allows them to create posters of individuals that influence the movement and require them to apply a similar style. While learning about the grid, students create layouts using only eight point type and one other point size. In addition to using a grid, the layout must use alignment, letter spacing, kerning, and letting. Students learn to identify serifs and sans serifs by creating ransom notes. These ransom notes are cut out of magazines and taped into students' sketchbooks. The anatomy of type is understood by students drawing their names in either a sans or serif font. Students are introduced to the history of type 
and learn classic typefaces by drawing them in their sketchbook. Students review type specimen books and make choices about letters that interest them. They create those letters in SALT, photograph them, and create an animated GIF. Students learn the history of the alphabet by choosing a letter to research, summarize, and then create three designs about that letter. One design is to have the emphasis on the headline of that letter. The second is to have the emphasis on the text box. And the third is to have the emphasis on the letter. To understand weights and the specific attributes of each, students create posters about each of the weights in a particular family. This project has students visually communicate two opposite words using only black feature or bold type. I usually provide a list of words, but sometimes students create their own. Students learn how type communicates meaning by drawing letters that visually communicate certain words, such as slicing, perforating, geometric, and spattering. Type that communicates a feeling continues in 3D by students choosing a word that isn't associated with a physical thing. Students use found objects to express the word. It starts out as 3D and is converted by 2D when students photograph them. Students learn to use type as a pattern, first in black and white and then in color, while exploring color theory and how color can look different when on different backgrounds, the Bezold effect. Understanding type as form is, type as form is explored by the use of Illustrator. Students are given creative freedom usually picking what they're interested in, but sometimes I'm not sure what to expect, but it's usually very impressive. In addition to type as form, students create a portrait using only type. It begins with a photograph made into a template layer in Illustrator, and then created using type on a path or using just letters as objects. Oftentimes, the school acts as a client and students design school events that happen annually, or they're asked to create things that are used by the entire school. All seniors compete to design the invitation to the, or their awards night and to their graduation. And all students compete to design the holiday card, which also has an animation in addition to the printed form. The school also has an annual art and literary magazine that DVC juniors design. These are examples of two, color, two covers, which students have creative freedom. As an entire class, students design projects for people in the community. This is an annual event that benefits sarcoma, where the class designs multiple pieces across media. Shown here is a postcard invitation in the cover for the program. Sometimes only one student would work on something uh, that comes from the community, such as this sandwich board sign. Sometimes when a client needs a logo, it will turn into a class competition, and the clients gives students, quote unquote, a scholarship. While going through a comprehensive lesson on how to create logos, students explore the many forms logos can take. This photo shows how one student's evolution of a type-only logo, shown on the left, didn't quite visually communicate a cup or a flower. The final icon logo is shown in color. Here's the complete stationery, not shown as the website. If there's time, students also can create packaging for their identity. Students learn to use the negative shapes of type and understand gestalt, and how important figure ground is to logo development. Every year, students participate in a poster contest sponsored by the Massachusetts Partnership for Youth, or the or known as the MPY. These posters are required to communicate a specific theme as designated by the MPY, but other requirements, such as typography and layout, are required by me. This slide shows a winner for one year, and again, this is another winner for another year, and of course with a different theme. And this is an honorable mention winner with another theme as well. Students learn the basics of UI UX principles to design an app, and using XD, they bring their sketches to life. Final assignments in typography include creating type specimen books. 
learning hand lettering, and traditional calligraphy while designing a phrase of their choice. Students learn about title sequences using After Effects, and they also learn about best practices and one of the greatest, Saul Bass. Here are two examples. All students design a typeface from concept to sketching to drawing an illustrator with completion of an open type font that they can use on their computer. We also research and watch videos about great typographers with projects centered on their styles. Some of my projects come from these places, but some have come from my freelance experience as well. I hope you enjoyed seeing what 11th and 12th grade DVC students are learning these days, and thank you very much.